What's up you guys, Emmett Short here. I'm back from CES. I should have done this video about four days ago, but honestly, I needed time to decompress from CES and Vegas in general. <sighs> okay, there's way too much to see here. I feel absolutely lost. I have extreme respect for the people that have done this convention before and have done it well. Marquez, uh, you're crushing it. I'm in the sun, chosen the worst spot to do this. Everything's a fiasco. This is, I, I don't even. I know, I kind of sound like a bitch there. But, so <laughs> I did get a bunch of actual interviews and a bunch of cool footage. And at the end of it, I decided to bring it all back here to the studio, think about what I'm gonna say and present it in a nice way. So that's what this is. First off, everybody's talking about the Sony car. Ooh, the Sony car, the Sony car that will never see the light of day. You know what nobody's talking about? The LG car. Yeah, LG had a car. Nobody's talking about it because it looks like this. It looks like a double-decker bus for midgets. It's ugly, it's not pretty. I don't know what they're riding high maybe on their rollable TV and they're like, we can do anything. You can't, Get put that car away, it's disgusting. But the Sony car, the Sony car looked really cool. Who cares? You're never gonna ride in one. The Sony car served the exact same purpose as the LG car. It was just an example piece to show off the kind of tech they wanna put in actual production cars. So the camera sensor technology. Camera technology, which Everyone's using cameras for and sensors. There's nothing different there. The uh, infotainment system that we have developed in-house, right? Their infotainment system, which is just a big long screen, it's just a different form factor for a screen. Nothing really to talk about there. The sound technology. The, the, 360, the 360 sound. Reality audio. Okay. Yes. And then their 360 reality audio technology, which they did integrate into the speakers and the software of the car. I did try the 360 reality audio with a pair of Sony headphones. What they did was they mapped the inside of my ear, which I guess I'm okay with. Using that information, they figured out how to project the audio and turns it into kind of a live version of the song. It gives some sort of 3D depth to the song kind of, in my opinion, messes with the mix. The final process of creating a song is the technician mixing down the levels and creating that perfect final master. I think it's strange that Sony would say, no, nah, no, nah, we're gonna throw an algorithm on top of that, that changes the artist's intentions. It definitely gave a live feel, but I wouldn't say that it's better. It sounded live, it didn't sound better. But if you wanna try it for yourself, you need a pair of compatible Sony headphones and the app, which I will link to in the description. That being said, it would be very cool to see that Sony infotainment system start showing up in Cars of the Future. Okay, there were a ton of robots at CES. Ford had a robot. I saw dog babysitter robots. But this robot from Sarcos really shows how integrated humans and robots can be. It's a full body powered exoskeleton, which means that it uh, supports all of its own weight as well as whatever I'm carrying. So I don't see any of that weight on me. It basically feels like I'm wearing a small backpack and carrying that around. So it's not very fatiguing either. And I could definitely do it for a full day's work. This thing is awesome in case you need to change an airplane tire or fight an alien. I think this is just a good lesson for everyone to know that you've always got to be learning new skills and learning how to work the new technology because the new technology is encroaching in the workplace constantly. So if we just keep learning that new technology, you can keep being the person operating the new technology. But if you're just using brute strength, well, these robots are coming for the brute strength jobs. This is one of the many things I saw at CES that made me want to vote for Andrew Yang. If you want to learn more about how automation and artificial intelligence are taking all the jobs and how Andrew Yang has a plan to help us get through that difficult time, I've got a couple of videos on it. I will link in the description and right up here. Sarcos already has a deal with Delta, so it might not be too long before you're at the airport and you see somebody down on the tarmac running around doing baggage claim or maintenance with one of these things on. Another piece of tech I've been excited about since I bought one off Indiegogo is Air Selfie. 
these tiny little drones that fit in your back pocket. They're like the size of a cell phone and they're all gesture controlled. They pop up, they take some videos, some photos and fly right back to your hand and you can put them just, you know, carry them around in your back pocket. They've been delayed and delayed and delayed. So I made sure I went to the booth to figure out what's happened. Hey Emmett, I'm Eileen Murphy. Very nice to meet you with their selfie. It's coming, right? It I, we're here at CES. We're flying these babies. I know. I'm track, I tracked you down. Just I'm a to backer make sure. too. I'm, I keep saying, guys, what's the real date? But to be honest, like we've been, we don't want to ship crap, right? Let's just call it what it is. So, what were the things that got fixed? So, you've seen here in the booth how we do this auto fly. Yeah. That's our big thing. Toss it out, let it take a picture or two, hover, and come back. Nice. It was not doing that June, July, August, September, October. Now, we nailed it. Like, we finally got this, so it's doing the hand gestures. One, two, fans start to activate. Toss it out, okay? So now, I gotta get it to flicker for me. Okay, now I know it sees me, so now I'm gonna put my hands in the air, and I'm gonna raise my right hand, and it's gonna start to rotate, go left, excuse me, not rotate, go left. Drop my hand, raise my left hand, and it sees me, and it's gonna start to go right, okay? Now I'm gonna close my left fist. Now it's doing video. All right, recording video. Okay, so when there's no lights for recording video. Yep, and now I'm gonna put my fist up again and I'm gonna close it, and it's gonna see that and turn the camera back on. Now I'm gonna raise my right hand, I'm gonna close my fist, and now it's gonna take a picture right there, just took a picture. All right, and now I'm gonna bring it back. It sees me, put my hands in the air, I'm gonna drop my hands. They already have two new versions. They've got an Air Pix, which has a little bit more of an aerodynamic design, and it also has a camera that can be tilted down. They also have an Air Pix Duo, and that one has a camera on the front that doesn't move and a camera directly underneath that doesn't move. Those two haven't been announced yet, uh, but they should be announced this year. No word on pricing for those yet. I should be getting mine this month and I'll be doing a review on that. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you do that so you don't miss it. There is no shortage of VR tech at CES, but I found this company that's doing amazing things. We're primarily showing off uh, hand tracking um, and the ability to target your hands with haptic experiences that really add a next level of interaction and responsiveness to the interfaces that you're going to experience here. They can not only see your hands without any gloves, but they can give you haptic feedback. They use projected ultrasounds to give you a tactile feedback in midair. Will you be able to type with these haptics? Yeah, so we can have support a number of different interactions. We can have a virtual keyboard that you can tap and feel in midair. A lot of our interfaces are actually based around sort of object manipulation and treating virtual 3D pieces as interaction elements that you can reach out and touch. I tried it and it actually didn't suck. You can buy the Leap Motion controller right now, and there is a developer kit. I'll link to all that in the description. And Ultra Leap is actually already using this technology for things like interactive movie posters, for Spider-Man, in fact. So this is the kind of technology you're gonna start seeing in the real world real soon. Everything I talked about today will be linked down in the description. That does it for me and the best tech I saw at CES. Let me know in the comments if you have questions about one of these. I'll do my best to answer them. I just want to thank my patrons for being the reason I was even able to go to this thing and cover it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.